let's get going. Hey, week number 13. I only have a few more to go. Woo, woo, woo. Because <laughs> week 17 and 18 are just review for the exam. Oh, man. Let's get down there. All right. I will be free at last. Free at last. This week we have a geometric series that we're going to be working or geometric sequences and series. So I should say both of them in there. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a geometric sequence. Remember, a sequence is when you have the numbers in order. Um, like, for example, this is a geometric sequence. If I did something like two, four, eight, 16, 32, dot, 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 dot. Okay, a geometric sequence is something that if you multiply every term, so it's really called a ratio. We're multiplying by a ratio. So if I multiplied everything by two here, that would give me, so two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32. So my R or my ratio is two. So in order to write an equation for a geometric sequence, super simple, your function, it's a sub n is equal to a sub one times r to the n minus one power. That's it. So in this problem, my first term is two. My ratio is two to the n minus one power. Now, does it work? Why do we use the n minus one power instead of just n? Okay, because, and here's the reason. This is my first term, right? So when I plug in one, I should get two out. Well, if I put one in here, one minus one is zero. So this would be two times two to the zero. What is anything to the zero power? One. So really this becomes two times one, which is two. So that's why we do the n minus one power up here because that would give, when you do the first term, it will make this zero and that would just basically make that a one. So this becomes your first term, whatever this is right here. So now some kids are going to say, well, do we have to do recursive formulas for these? No, this is the only type. It's an explicit formula, no recursive ones. Okay. The lesson already started. Yes. We just, we just started. Okay. So this is our explicit formula. A sub n is equal to the first term times R to the n minus one power. That's it. That's all it is, okay? So here it is written out nicely. A sub n is equal to a sub one r times n minus one. Here's problem number one on your assessment this week. It says determine whether the sequence is geometric. If so, find the explicit formula for it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out if it's geometric or not. Is this a geometric sequence? Yeah, so your, so your answer for problem number one is going to be yes, and then you have to write the equation, okay? So in this problem, all I need to know to write an equation for a geometric sequence is the first term and the R value. And the R value is five. So this would be two times five to the n minus one power, and I should put a sub n here, right? Yeah, not, not, yeah, negative one instead of negative two, correct. So that should be my equation, done, that's it. That's as easy as it gets, isn't it? All right, that's problem number one. That's talking about sequences. Okay, problem number two, it says, given two terms in a geometric sequence, find the term named in the problem and the explicit formula. Ooh, okay. So this is what I would do in a problem like this. I would go one, two, three, four, five. A sub five is 48. So I'm gonna put 48 here. A sub four is 24. Can anybody tell me what A sub three is equal to? What is A sub three equal? 12. What is A sub two equal to? Six, what is a sub one equal to? Three, ah, because in order to write any explicit formula, I need the first term, so a sub one, 
is equal to three. And I need the R value. What is my R value? Two, right? Three times two is six, six times two is 12, 12 times two is 24, so R is two. So my explicit formula, a sub n is equal to three times two to the n minus one. Now I'm not yet. It asked me to find a sub nine. So that means I have to put nine in here. So a sub nine is equal to three times two to the eighth power, right? To the eighth power, not the ninth power because it's n minus one. So Angela says the answer is 768. Um, I don't know, I didn't plug that into my calculator. Do we have somebody else that says yes? That that is the correct answer. I don't have, I don't, I don't wanna give you the wrong answer, but if somebody else says, yeah, okay. All right, so we're, we're at 768 here. So ace of nine is equal to 768. Okay, so that was a little bit of, you know, just thinking about what's happening in this problem. They gave me ace of five, they gave me ace of four. So I had to kind of um, work my way down. We put it, well, we really put in nine. We did put in nine because we wanted the ninth term, but nine minus one gives us eight. Remember, it's n minus one. So nine minus one is eight. That's why, that's why it's, eight. we did put in nine, but it, nine minus one gives us eight. Okay. All right. Now, Geometric series is when you add terms together, right? So let's say I gave you this geometric sequence. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I said, what is S of 5 for this sequence? You could just add them all up, right? Okay, so what would that equal? 62? <laughs> Why a question mark? <laughs> Hopefully your addition is okay. So let's say 62. So now there's a formula here that says we can find, we can use this formula to find the sum of any geometric series. Okay. So in this series, a sub one is two, right? So I'm just going to use this series to show that this formula does work. So that's two and then one minus R to the end. What's my R value in this problem? A sub one, a sub one was equal to two. What is R equal? Two, okay. So this would be two to the, we wanted S of five, right? So the fifth, so this would be five over one minus two. Calculator comes in handy right now, but let's just not use a calculator. Let's go this way. So one minus two on the bottom, that's negative one, isn't it? Okay, and then one minus two to the fifth. Well, two to the fifth is equal to 32. So 1 minus 32 uh, is negative 31, right? So now I come up with 2 times 31 because negative times or negative divided by negative is positive. So that's 62. So this formula does work. Boom. Pretty awesome, hey? Does anybody know the difference between finite and infinite? Because this only works for an infinite geometric series. Nope, this works for a finite. <laughs> this only works for a finite. Infinite goes on forever, correct? And finite means that it there's a, a set number of terms, like there's 20 terms or 30 terms or 40 terms. Infinite means it goes on forever. Thank you for correcting me. Okay, so this is a finite series. There, there is going to be a number at the end, okay? There's a starting point and an ending point, correct? All right, so this formula only works for finite. If it's infinite, it doesn't work. And I'll show you the formula for that one in just a second, okay? All right, so this one's pretty easy. So problem number three on your assessment, it says find the sum of the first six terms of the geometric series eight, negative 20, five. Okay, so let's write these out. So I've got, Let's write the equation first. S of n is equal to a sub one, one minus r to the n over one minus r, okay? So 80, negative 20, five, what would be the next number here? 
what would the next number be? What are we doing to get to the next? We're dividing by four, right? So our, our, our value would not be negative four because negative four means that I'd be multiplying by negative four. Negative one four is my R value. Okay. A 1.25 is not the same thing as negative four, one four. Now, if that one was supposed to be a negative, <laughs> and then I would say, okay, but 1.25 is not the same thing as uh, negative one fourth. So my R value is negative one fourth. My first term is 80. And they want me to come up with the first six terms, right? So I'm going to use, I'm going to use this formula. S of six is equal to the first term, which is 80 times one minus a negative one fourth to the sixth power. And I'm gonna put that inside parentheses, okay? And then this is gonna be one minus one fourth, negative one fourth, sorry about that. Okay, so this is gonna be plus plus down here, right? Oof, plugging this into your calculator could be a little tricky, couldn't it? When you think about it, I mean, you got a lot of stuff to put in there. Make sure you use parentheses, okay? What is the value there? Can anybody tell me what the value is? 63 and 63 over 64. I would just give it as a decimal. I would go 63. 0.98. Now, some kids are going to say, but Mr. Shanghai, how can that be true? The first number is 80. Shouldn't our answer, because we're adding all the terms together, shouldn't it be more than 80? Can somebody tell me why that's not true? Why isn't that true? Why, why wouldn't our answer be more than 80? If I started with 80 and I added a number, yeah, I'm adding negative 20. My next my next term I'm adding is negative 20. So 80 plus negative 20, that gives me 60. Then I'm going to add five. That gives me 65. Then I'm going to add a negative 2.5, isn't it? Oh, no, it's less than that. Um, four fifths. So it's going to be one negative 1 1.25. So that's going to give me like, what, 63.75. Point, 60 point, and then see how it's going. It's getting closer and closer to this answer right here. Changes frequently. Yeah, just plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. But this formula is pretty cool. Okay. Works out really well. So that's problem number three. All right. Now, if you have a finite series, okay. If R is greater than one, so if your R value is greater than one, you'll never be able to find the sum because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So for example, if I gave you this and I said, and I'm gonna write it out this way using the sum formation, N equals one to infinity, because that's what it means. You're just gonna keep adding all these numbers together. And I tell you that my function is, let's say um, four, times two to the n minus one. You wouldn't even have to do anything in this problem. Your R value is greater than one. This answer is going to be infinity. It, the numbers are gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so you, you're just gonna keep adding numbers onto your answer. It's never gonna end, it's gonna be infinity. When does this formula work? This one right here. This formula works when R is less than one and greater than zero. So if R is equal to one half, it will have a sum. If R is equal to one fourth, it will have a sum. If R is equal to one third, it will add up to something, okay? So for example, if I gave you 10, five, 2.5, 1.25, okay? And I asked you to find the sum of that, well, right away, if I added 10 plus five, that's 15, that's 17.5, add another 17.5, so that's 18.25. It looks like it's getting close to 20, doesn't it? If I just keep adding all these numbers together, 
I would say my, my guess would be about 20, right? Does that make sense? Because you're going to, I have 10 plus 5, that's 15, plus 2.5, that's 17.5, plus 1.25, that's 18.75. And then I'm going to add a smaller number. Uh, what is that going to be? 0.75? And then point, you know, that's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm going to say that the answer is probably going to be, a, it's going to probably approach 20. So if I use my formula, it says a sub one, so that's 10, over one minus r. That's a really easy formula to use. Um, this was one half, right? So that's 10. And then over one minus one half, that's one half. <gasps> Complex fraction. That's equal to 20. So the sum of this, if I added an infinite number of or of these numbers together, it will be 20, guaranteed. So that is, that is the formula that we use if it's a geometric series and it's an infinite geometric series. It's just a sub one over one minus r. Really simple formula, okay? Problem number four on your assessment. It says find the sum of each infinite geometric series. If the series has no sum, state, state, so state, so state, so. No, no, no. All right, in this problem, my first term is 36. What's a sub one? What does a sub one equal? No, that is, <laughs> Mr. Shanklin, you're not too smart. All right. That's 36. A sub 1 is 36. What is R? That's what I was going to ask. What is my R value? 3? It's not 3. Because if this was 36 and my R value is 3, 36 times 3 would be mm, way bigger than 12. How about 1 third? 1 third. 36 times 1 third is 12. 12 times 1 third is 4. So does this geometric series have an answer? Will it have a sum? Yes. The reason? Because our R value is between zero, oops, that was a three, between zero and one. Okay, so that will have. So my formula is a sub one is equal to, or a sub one over one minus R. A sub one is 36. Now, could you kind of think of what the answer is going to be about without doing it? 36 plus 12. 36 plus 12, that's 48, plus 4, that's 52. Uh, I'm going to add two next. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to add four thirds next. So it's it's going to get really, really small, right? Okay, 54. So it's getting closer. So then my bottom is going to be 1 minus 1 third. Well, so that's 36. 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. Complex fraction. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. 36 over 1 times 3 over 2. I'm going to simplify. So 18 times 3 is whoops, 54. No, you don't have to make an estimation. No, I'm just I'm just looking at it and just thinking, okay, you know, so if you came up with, like if you said the answer is like mm, 150, it's like, you know, that doesn't even sound right, does it? Okay, so I just I just do it just so I kind of have an idea what the answer sh is getting close to. You don't have to do that. Just it's the way my mind works. Because if I came up with 150 and I didn't look at it, it's like oh okay my answer is 150. No, nah, it doesn't even make sense. So that's that's just how I do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right. So today's um, practice. Let me give you Desmos presentation. There it is. Let me um, share my screen with you guys. Now I'm going to apologize right off the bat. Problem number one on this week's practice should not be there. Okay, it is the hardest problem on the whole practice. I shouldn't have put it on there. It's, I mean, we're gonna do it. It's just, it's one of those problems that I shouldn't have put on there. It's not something that you should know how to do. The math in this problem would be too hard. Okay, so this is problem number one. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, if I saw this problem, I've got A3, this is how I would set this problem up. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
a sub three is four ninths. A sub six, so that's four, five, six, is four over 243, okay? So there's a gap in there. And when there's a gap in there, it makes it a whole lot harder to do, okay? So, yeah. So what I did um, is I just looked at it and I said, okay, I bet you this is three. I bet you that I'm multiplying the bottom by three. So nine times, or I, I, I'm, I'm betting that this is a three here. The top never changes, does it? The top is always four. Doesn't matter what you have here. So three times, three times two, or I'm sorry, three squared is nine. Three to the third is 27. Three to the fourth is 81. Three to the fifth is 243. So this, if I keep going backwards, this would be four over one, which is just four. So what is my, what is my ratio here? My ratio is, let's see if somebody got it. I have to go back to that. Yeah, my ratio is one third. I'm multiplying by three. Um, one third is exactly right. So my first term, so a sub one is equal to four. R is equal to one third. I wrote, oh, it didn't even ask me to write the equation out, did it? Oh, but it, I, it wants me to find, oh, it wants me to find the fourth term. Oh, boy, that was, I didn't have to do much to do on that one. Okay. So it should be four, the fourth term should be 427. Okay. Now that, that problem I shouldn't have put on there. It's a thinking problem. And I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't go that far. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm done. You got 427s. I thought I had to write the equation too. All right, now the rest of the problems on the practice are pretty easy. So for example, problem number two, it says find the nth term of the geometric sequence with the given first term A and the common ratio R, what is the fifth term? Okay, so now they give me the information. Okay, so my first term is 5 thirds times my ratio, which is negative one third. And they want me to find, and this is n minus one, right? That's how we find, okay? So now they want me to find the fifth term. So this is gonna be five thirds times negative one third. And then I put five in here. So five minus one is four. And then that will give me my fifth term, okay? So my equation, a sub n, is equal to five thirds, negative one to the n minus one power. So there's really one, two, the, uh, it looks like these are the only two right here. Okay, so what is, what is my fifth term if you plug it in? So I know that it's gonna be positive because one third to the fourth power is definitely positive. So this is gonna be five thirds times three, that's nine, that's 27, that's 81. So five, and obviously you don't have to, you can just use a calculator if you wanted to on this. And three times 81 is 243, is that right? No, yeah, yep. So I'm gonna go with this one right here. Okay, so I had to write out my, I had to write out the equation and then I had to find the fifth term there. Yep, letter D. All right, problem number three. And when you guys are doing problem number th three, I'm gonna take attendance. Okay, I was gonna see if it takes long enough to do it. So you guys do number three, I'm gonna take attendance. Just so I have who's here and who's not. Okay. Okay, got it. All right, so in this problem, it says, determine whether the sequence 6, 18, 54, 162 is geometric. If it is geometric, find the common ratio, select the correct answer. Okay, so I'm looking at this problem and it looks like if I multiply by three, so six times three is 18. Okay, so six 
times three is 18, times three is 54, times three is 162. It definitely is a geometric sequence. So my R value is uh, three. My first term is six. So if I write an equation, a sub n is equal to first term times the ratio n minus one. Oh, oh, they didn't, oh, they didn't, oh, I'm doing too much work this week. Sorry about that, guys. I'm doing more work than I had to. So the answer is yes, it's geometric, and the R value is three. Did not have to write the equation for it. Just too excited about math. Want to do all the problems. Okay, problem number four. Determine whether the sequence is geometric. If it's geometric, find the common ratio. Okay, so I'm not going to make the same mistake this time. Okay, so you guys are saying it is a geometric sequence, and the R value is negative one or negative one third. I agree with you. Anytime it goes from positive to negative to positive to negative, the R value has to be negative. Has to be, because that's the only way that it's going to go positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay. So anytime you see a sequence that is going from positive to negative to positive to negative, you know the R value has to be negative, okay? That is a must. So we said the answer is A. I agree with you guys. The answer is A. It's geometric, and the, C, and the R value is one-third. Good job. All right, problem number five. It says, determine whether the sequence is geometric. If so, find the common rate. Well, I already got way too many easy problems here. All right. Is it geometric? It is not geometric. You're right. What type is it? It's not geometric, but it is the other kind. <laughs> it's arithmetic. Yes. That's the kind that we were dealing with last week, where if you add the same number to each one, then it is an arithmetic sequence. So this one is not geometric, it's arithmetic. So the answer is D, it is not geometric. And if it is not geometric, you can't find the ratio because there is no ratio. All right, then there's a D value. Number six, write the first five terms of the geometric sequence. All right, so in order to write the first five terms, I, I suppose I don't need the um, equation I'm going to write it out anyways. A sub n is equal to negative three. And then negative one fourth to the n minus one power. But I don't need to do that, right? Because I know the first term is negative three. The second term is going to be negative three times negative one fourth, which is positive uh, three fourths. Then my next term, I'm going to multiply by negative one fourth, which gives me negative uh, three um, sixteenths. And then my next term, I'm going to multiply by negative one fourth, which would give me positive three over, uh, you know, my, so that is that 64. And then it's going to be negative three over. So which one of those is it, the correct value? Letter A, negative three, three fourths, negative three sixteenths, three over 64, negative three over 256. I agree. Very good. Excellent. All right, problem number seven. Number seven, it says write the nth term of the geometric sequence. Okay, so now it wants us to write an nth term. This one, I was, this one I looked at and it's like, what the heck is that? Um, a sub k plus one equals negative four times a sub k. Why did they give us that? Yeah, they're telling us that the R value is negative four. Because if the next term in the sequence is the previous term times negative four, negative four has to be our ratio because we're always multiplying by negative four. That one, that one, you had to do a little bit of thinking about, okay, why, why did they give us this? They didn't give it to me because of nothing. But the reason they gave it to us is so we know that we're multiplying by negative four to get to the next term. So it would be negative three, then 12, then uh, negative 48 if I kept going. Da, 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 da. So the reason they gave us this is it's telling us that we're multiplying by negative four to get to our next term. So in order to write my equation, all I need is the first term, which is negative three. I need my R value, which is negative four. So that's going to be negative three times negative four to the n minus one power. 
done. Okay, so letter D was that? So kind of kind of tricky there. Um, you know, when I looked at it, it's like, why did they have an A uh, negative four A K? Well, it's just telling you that this, the negative four is the one that is our ratio. All right, number eight. It says, it says, find the indicated nth term of the geometric sequence. Okay, now, some of you, you're gonna say, Mr. Shang, I'm not even gonna work, I, I'm just gonna keep working this out. So it's always going up by four, right? So um, the fourth term, the fifth term, the sixth term, the seventh term. Okay, so if I keep multiplying by four, so 80 times four is, oops, my calculator's turned off. 80 times four is 320. Uh, 320 times 4 is 1,280 times 4 is 5,120 times 4 is 20,480. Okay, so I came up with it just finding the next term for each one, okay? And that's fine. You can do it that way. Nobody said a multiple choice, you have to do it anyway. But I, you know, if I was going to really do this problem, I'd probably say, okay, my first term is five, my ratio is four, n minus one. So I want to find the seventh term. So I put seven in here. So this is going to be five times four to the sixth power. Let's see if we get the same answer. Five times four raised to the sixth power, I get 20,480. Okay, so I get the same answer regardless of which way I, I do the problem. Okay, so it makes no difference. I really don't care how you do it. I, I would get in the in the habit of um, you know multiply or doing the equations. Oh, that that's a multiplication symbol. Yeah, that's not that's I shouldn't have even that's multiplication there. Okay, and usually you don't even put that in there. You would just write it as like five and then four to the n minus one. That's usually how it's written, but you can do it any way you want. All right, next problem. I think it's a sum problem, okay? It says, evaluate the series, six minus 24 plus 96 minus 384 plus da, da, da. So it wants the sum of the first seven terms. Now I could come up with the next couple terms and do that, or, we could use the formula, a sub one, and then one minus r to the n over one minus r. What two pieces of information do I need in order to use this formula? Okay, there's only two pieces of information I need to use this formula. What are, what are a sub one and r, right? That's exactly right. So what is my first term? a sub one is six. What is R in this problem? R is negative four, right. Okay. I think so. I saw somebody say negative two there. I'm gonna go with negative four because six times negative four is negative 24. Negative 24 times negative four is positive 96. So here's my, here's everything I need. I'm just gonna plug it into my formula. S of seven is equal to six. One minus R, which is negative four, to the, oh, I guess I needed, I needed three things. I needed the N. I needed to know how many terms I'm gonna use. So that's seven, right? And then one minus negative four. Okay. One minus negative four, that's going to be five on the bottom, right? That's gonna be five. And then I would definitely do this on in the calculator because that, it's gonna be a pretty big number if I'm, so one minus, and then I'm gonna put that in parentheses, negative four raised to the seventh power. And that gave me, so now I have six parentheses, 16,385 over five. So I'm gonna divide by five and I get six times 3,277. So times six, so I end up with 19,662. Boom. 
And there's my formula, or there's, there's my answer. Now, you could have just kept finding all six terms and then add them together, perfectly fine. It does work. I mean, I think it would take a little bit longer because you have to come up with the first seven numbers and then you have to go back and add them together. But whatever works for you is fine. I mean, that's it's okay. You put the equation into sigma. Oh, and you use Desmos? That is another way to use it. That is, I didn't even think about that. So yeah, you could just, you could um, write, so you could go n equals one to seven. And then uh, what was our equation? It was six times negative four to the n minus one. So you could just plug that into Desmos. That would work. Yeah. Never even thought about doing it that way. Uh, how did I know n was seven? It told me. Um, down here it said s of seven. It's hard to read, but that was s of seven. S of s of seven means this that they want you to add the seven terms together. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is very small. No question about it. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. All right. Next problem is also a um, series that we're supposed to add. Now this one is S of five, I think. I think that says five down there, okay? So S of five. We almost have all five terms, <laughs> but I, I'm gonna do it using A sub one is a thousand. R is equal to, what is that, one half? And N is equal to five. So here's my, here's my terms. So 1,000, one minus one half to the fifth power over one minus one half. Okay, so if I did this problem, I'd have 1,000 and then on the, on the bottom, I'm gonna have 0.5, right? Now this, I'm gonna just work out on my calculator. I've got one minus um, one half raised to the fifth power. So I end up with, oh, there's a decimal, 0. 0.96875 uh, divided by 0. 0.5 times 1,000. And I come up with 1,937.5. Again, you could have put this into an equation and, and put it into Desmos. It would also work. Yeah. So these formulas are pretty cool, I think. All right. So oh, that was the last problem on the practice for this week. Any questions on the practice problems that we just did? What equation will we use for Desmos? You use the, the um, explicit formula. So if I was going to use Desmos on here, I would, this is what I would do. I would go N equals one, two, five. And then what is my equation here? Well, it's 1000 um, and then one half to the N minus one. You have to use your explicit formula because then what this does is it puts one in there, then it puts two in here and then three in here and then it adds all those numbers together. So that's how you would do it. Uh, I don't think you, I think only when you have addition do you have to do that. I, you might have to put the, the parentheses around the N minus one because I was practicing, I was using Desmos. And if you did, if you did two N, you don't need the parentheses. But as soon as you put the plus two here, what Desmos sees is it will find this sum and then it will add two onto it. So if you wanted it to be two N plus two, then you put the parentheses around the whole thing. Yeah, I was playing around with it to see um, where I was making my mistake and that's what it was seeing. It, it only sees the first thing in front of the, the sigma notation. And if you have a plus sign, it doesn't see that, it just adds two on at the end. So that's where I was making my mistake. So you have to put parentheses around there. All right, seems like a fairly easy week, right guys? Shouldn't be too bad.
And I know, I know, Angela, you've already finished, right? Did you have a very hard time with it? You did have a hard time with it? <laughs> Great. <laughs> it was pretty simple. All right. <laughs> I was gonna say you had a you got an advance on it, if my if my uh, memory serves me correctly. All right, you guys have a great week. Remember Wednesday we do have a help session if you need help. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>